So congratulations on your new Kinetics 55 or 5700 purchase. I'm just going to cover the top seven things you might not know that your Kinetics can do. So let's jump into it. So the first thing I want to cover is power sharing. So both the 55 and 5700 share power via bus bars on top. So one advantage that really adds is if you need to expand your axes and just add one on, instead of having to take all the drives off and replace a power rail with a lot with a large power rail, we can just snap on a new T-bar and you're good to go. It makes adding on a breeze. And with the 5700, you might already have an odd number of axes with a spare axis just sitting there. And so you can just tack on an axis right there, which is really nice if you have perhaps a machine with one induction motor, you can actually throw the induction motor on, which actually brings me to my second point. The 55 and 5700 being SIP drives can take third party motors as well as induction motors. Not all SIP drives can do induction motors, but these can, this one can, the 5500 can do up to sensorless vector and the 5700 can do flux vector control of induction motor drives, which can really help reduce part numbers. Uh, number three on my list is load observer. So I'm sure if you've talked to me before, you've definitely heard me talk about it because it's one of my favorite things. But so load observer is a tuning technology that's basically designed to decrease scrap, decrease motor wear, and perhaps the thing that my customers care most about is decrease number of E19 faults. So if you've had a Kinetic 6000 in the past, you've definitely had this one at some point. So as your you know bearings wear out or your guides and stuff like that, you get an E19 fault because your servo can't follow good enough. Basically, it just can't keep up to where it used to. And so basically, this simplifies tuning. So it takes into account backlash and compliance. And over time, as your system changes, you're going to have just simple changes that need to be, your system should be retuned, but you don't have the time, you don't have time to go out there, and you don't know when to do it, moreover. And you can get harmonics into your system. So we actually, on a t in addition to Load Observer, we have a notch filter that will go and find the frequency that's causing the issue and tune it out. So it's basically a way better version of auto-tune, but it keeps running continuously, so you never have to go out there and change it yourself. And, right, so it's changing its tuning parameters, so it's some, somewhat of a prescriptive uh, analytics tool. So it changes, the pres it actually, uh, yeah, it'll change your tuning parameters, so it'll save you time, and it'll keep you from having any downtime. But the nice, and I'll call this a number four on my list, is preventative maintenance. So since this has a bandwidth that's tuning out as well as a bandwidth that is tuning, right? So Load Observer has a tuning bandwidth and the Notch Filter has a, a bandwidth that is tuning out. We can keep track of these, these bandwidths and note if they're changing at all. That way we know our system is changing and we know to go out there and uh, for preventative maintenance purposes and make sure nothing bad is happening or, you know, check up on stuff. Uh, number five on my list is actually expanded motor capabilities. So, right, we get the single cable. You probably already know that if you're getting it. So we have, right, here's our feedback cable. It's right in the same cable as before. So we get the VPL. We got the VPF, right, the food grade. Um, there is a VPS, but we don't like talking about that. We have the VPC, which goes up to 30 kilowatts, right? It has both a fan and we have a fanless version, but that gets a lot larger. And my favorite in the lineup is, of course, the VPH. So this is the hygienic design. So it kind of expands from where the MPS was. So the first thing it is, is it doesn't have a, a slinger on there. So it gets IP69K washdown rating without that slinger, which is which is pretty awesome. Uh, secondly, from a hygienic standpoint, we follow eHedge and 3A guidelines and several others. So basically, one of the things you'll see, there's no sharp corners on the back. That's not even a flat surface right you can kind of see there's a peak there so if this motor is facing down the water will run right off there there's no metal to metal joints uh, there's always a gasket in there that way we can't get ingress in these places and the the polish on it is actually a lot smoother so it's smaller than a lot of bacteria and viruses so it's a lot easier to wash down so if you know someone kind of haphazardly washes it they're not going to have to worry about there being uh, bacteria on their sterile. So it's easier to wash, but at the same time, it's more durable. And one of the other things about it is that the cable is configurable from one to 15 meters long. So you can take it all the way to the drive. Again, you can have an extension on this if you, you want to take it longer than your 15 meters, but it's kind of nice not to have to have a breakout box, you know, three to five meters away from your motor. 
um, and you can take it all the way to the drive, which is really, really nice. All right, number six is integrated safety. So the 5500 actually has different part numbers for its integrated safety, and this is just safe torque off over ethernet for this S2. This is hardwired safety, but I wanted to let you know that we do have that available. So what integrated safety adds, or over ethernet adds, is flexibility. So if your plant is changing and your floor is, is moving, we can easily change this to a different safety network without having to rewire everything, uh, you know, to a new e-stop and everything like that. It's as simple as just configuring it in Logix. Now the 5700 has the S3 model that is actually configurable. You go into your module properties to change it, whether it's hardwired or integrated safety. But the 5700 also has advanced safety. So stuff like safe direction, safe speed, uh, you know, stuff like that. And last but not least, we also have kinematics. So with the SIP, we can easily coordinate multiple axes to actually control what we have right now is Delta style robots through Codeon. Um, and we can easily control two axis with rotation or no rotation, three axis, and even up to five axis, which is basically three axis delta with pitch and yaw on the end effector. So we can easily do that all within Logix using our MPL motors or MPH motors. And it is a, just a breeze to do. So thank you for your time. I hope that was informative and maybe you have an idea of what features you can use in your system. Thank you.